Do you feel like you're stuck or find yourself attracting the same type of relationships and negative experiences or just not manifesting what you want in life? Welcome to Heal Your Story. I'm your host, Heidi Dallaire. Here we discuss all things life, love, relationships, the relationship with yourself, and the stories we tell about ourselves and others. I help people get out of their busy heads and get back in touch with their heart space to learn self-love and help heal their story. I'm a heart space and relational coach, a holistic health practitioner, and author at HeidiDelaire.com and LoveWideOpen.com. Let's go hold some heart space together. Hey all, welcome to episode 154 of the Heal Your Story podcast. Move from judgment to self-compassion, nurturing your inner well-being. Today's episode, I'll delve into the topic of self-compassion and how to be less judgmental towards ourselves. So grab a cozy seat, take a deep breath, and we'll dive in. Have you ever noticed how easy it is to be kind and understanding towards others? Yet when it comes to ourselves, we often become our harshest critics. We constantly judge ourselves for our perceived flaws and mistakes. And this self-judgment can take a toll on our emotional well-being. What if I told you that there's a way to break free from this cycle of self-criticism and instead cultivate self-compassion? Now, self-compassion is the practice of treating ourselves with kindness, understanding, and acceptance, especially during difficult times. It involves embracing our imperfections and recognizing our shared humanity. By developing self-compassion, we can foster a more positive and nurturing relationship with ourselves. So today, I'll explore these three core concepts of self-compassion, self-kindness, common humanity, and mindfulness, all within and under the umbrella of self-compassion. I will also discuss practical techniques to cultivate self-compassion and overcome the challenges that may arise along the way. So let's get started and discover how we can be less judgmental towards ourselves and show more self-compassion. Now, before we can even embark on our journey to be less judgmental and more self-compassionate, We have to take a moment to understand what self-compassion truly means. Self-compassion is a powerful practice that involves three core concepts, like I mentioned, self-kindness, common humanity, and mindfulness. So self-kindness means treating ourselves with warmth, understanding, and gentleness. How many times have you heard me say or seen it in social media, be more gentle with yourself? It's about extending the same compassion we would offer to a dear friend who is struggling. struggling. Instead of berating ourselves for our perceived flaws or mistakes, we practice self-kindness by offering ourselves comforting words, patience, and forgiveness. Now, the second component of self-compassion is recognize our common, recognizing our common humanity. Often, when we face challenges or make mistakes, We tend to believe that we're alone in our struggle. But the truth is, every human being experiences pain, failure, and imperfections. Embracing our common humanity allows us to realize that we are not alone in our experiences and that it's a normal part of the human condition. Mindfulness plays a crucial role in cultivating self-compassion. Mindfulness involves being present in the moment observing our thoughts and emotions without judgment. It's about cultivating a non-judgmental awareness of our inner experience. By practicing mindfulness, we can become more attuned to our self-judgment and develop the ability to respond with self-compassion instead. Now, it's important to note that self-compassion is different from self-esteem. While self-esteem is often based on our perceived successes and achievements, Self-compassion is about accepting ourselves unconditionally, regardless of our accomplishments. Self-compassion is available to us in both our highs and lows, allowing us to embrace ourselves with love and kindness throughout our journey. So as we move forward, 
Remember that self-compassion is not about indulging in self-pity or making excuses. It's about cultivating a genuine and compassionate relationship with ourselves so we can navigate life's challenges with greater resilience and inner strength. So now that we have a better understanding of self-compassion, let's just take a moment to reflect on our own patterns of self-judgment. It's essential to recognize and acknowledge the ways in which we tend to be harsh and critical towards ourselves. Have you ever caught yourself using negative self-talk? Perhaps you berate yourself for making a mistake, compare yourself unfavorably to others, or constantly doubt your abilities. These are all forms of self-judgment that can undermine our self-esteem and overall well-being. Now, self-judgment can be insidious as it often becomes ingrained in our thought patterns and habits. We may not even realize how frequently we engage in self-criticism. Now take a moment to reflect on the thoughts and words you use when you talk to yourself. Are they kind? Are they supportive? Are they understanding? Or are they filled with judgment, criticism, and self-doubt? Recognizing self-judgment is the first step towards cultivating self-compassion. By bringing awareness to our negative self-talk and patterns of self-judgment, we can begin to challenge and change them. Remember, self-compassion, it's a journey, and it starts with being gentle and patient with ourselves. The impact of self-judgment on our emotional well-being is, is significant. It can lead to increased stress, anxiety, and even depression. When we constantly criticize ourselves, we create a hostile inner environment that hinders our personal growth and prevents us from experiencing true self-acceptance. Okay, so as we continue our exploration of self-compassion, let's commit to noticing our self-judgment without judgment. Okay, did you catch that? Let's commit to noticing our self-judgment without judgment. It's okay if we slip up or find it challenging to break free from these patterns right away. The important thing is that we're taking the first steps towards cultivating self-compassion and showing ourselves the same kindness we would offer to others. So we've recognized the presence of self-judgment in our lives. Let's explore some practical techniques to cultivate self-compassion. These techniques can help us shift our mindset and develop a more nurturing relationship with ourselves. Now that first technique is self-kindness. Treat yourself with the same kindness, understanding, compassion that you'd offer to your friend. When you make a mistake or face a challenge, instead of berating yourself, offer words of comfort and support. Remind yourself it's okay to be imperfect and that everyone makes mistakes. Now the second technique is embracing common humanity. Recognizing that you're not alone in your struggles. Remember that every human being goes through difficulties and experiences pain. By embracing our shared humanity, we can develop empathy and understanding towards ourselves and others. Allow yourself to connect with the larger tapestry of the human experience. Again, the third technique, and I I just keep saying these, right? Like the third technique is cultivating mindfulness. So practice being present in the moment and observe your thoughts and emotions without judgment. And when you notice that self-judgment arising, take a step back and observe it with curiosity and compassion. Remind yourself that thoughts are not facts and you have the power to choose how you respond to them. So to cultivate mindfulness, let's take a moment to practice just a brief exercise. Find a comfortable position. Close your eyes. If it feels comfortable and bring your attention to your breath. Notice the sensation of each inhale and exhale, allowing yourself to fully experience the present moment. As thoughts arise, just simply observe them without getting caught up in their content. Remember this practice is not about suppressing or controlling your thoughts rather cultivating a non-judgmental awareness about your thoughts. Just take another 
deep inhale and exhale. Now, as you, in, as you continue to incorporate some of these techniques into your daily life, it's important to prioritize self-care. Nurture yourself physically, emotionally, and mentally. Engage in activities that bring you joy. Practice self-care rituals and surround yourself with a supportive network of friends and loved ones who uplift you and encourage you. What does that mean? Eat well. Drink water. Get rest. Hang out with positive people. If they're not positive, stay away. <laughs> Go for a walk. Indulge in self-care. Now, remember that cultivating self-compassion, it's practice. Just don't wake up one day and any negative self-talk just disappears. It takes practice and it requires patience and consistency, okay? In order to shift, you have to practice these things daily and be gentle with yourself throughout this journey. Now, there may be setbacks and moments when self-judgment resurfaces, but each moment provides an opportunity for growth and more self-discovery. So I encourage you to embrace self-kindness, recognize your common humanity, and cultivate mindfulness in your daily life. Doing so will create a foundation of self-compassion that will support you through life's changes and foster a deeper sense of well-being. And during this journey toward self-compassion, you may encounter a lot of challenges along the way, okay? And it's important to recognize them, recognize them completely. One common challenge is the deeply ingrained nature of self-judgment. Years of conditioning and societal influences have shaped our inner critic. So overcoming this challenge requires cultivating self-awareness. Notice when self-judgment arises and consciously choose to respond with self-compassion instead. With time and practice, you can rewire your thought patterns and create a more nurturing inner dialogue. Another challenge is the difficulty of letting go of past mistakes. We often hold on to guilt, shame, regret. This can all perpetuate to self-judgment. Remember, self-compassion involves self-forgiveness. Acknowledge your past mistakes as learning opportunities and offer yourself forgiveness and understanding. Embrace that present moment. Focus on growth and self-improvement. Seeking support from loved ones or a professional or a coach is another valuable strategy for overcoming challenges on the path to self-compassion. You can share your struggles with trusted friends and family who can offer empathy and encouragement. And if needed, consider reaching out to a therapist or a coach who can provide guidance and support in your journey towards self-compassion. And again, I'll repeat myself. It's important to remember that setbacks are a normal part of the process. Be patient and kind with yourself during these times. Practice self-compassion by acknowledging your feelings, offering yourself kindness, and gently guiding yourself back to a place of self-acceptance. Recognize and honor your efforts along the way. Celebrate the moments when you choose self-kindness over self-judgment. And let them inspire you to continue on this transformative path. Now remember, the journey towards self-compassion, it's ongoing. It just keeps going. It's a lifelong practice that requires dedication and, and a lot of self-reflection. So be patient with yourself. Treat yourself with kindness and embrace the power of self-compassion to bring about profound positive changes in your life. So as I wrap up, I want to leave you with the gentle reminder that you are deserving of kindness and compassion just as much as anyone else. By embracing self-compassion, you can create a more nurturing relationship with yourself and cultivate a deeper sense of well-being. Remember, it's okay to be imperfect. 
treat yourself with the love and understanding you would offer to others. If you're ready to finally say yes to yourself, then I encourage you to book a Heal Your Story strategy session and we can discuss how you start to move forward. I'm sending you lots of love. Be kind and gentle with yourself. Bye for now. Thank you for listening to another episode of Heal Your Story. Please subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. You can find me, my coaching services, my book, or book a Heal Your Story strategy session at HeidiDelaire.com. For other self-development articles, go to LoveWideOpen.com. And you can also follow me at Heidi Delaire or Love Wide Open on all social media channels. Thanks so much. Sending lots of love.